idea of uh, wanting to explore human perception in a film. Um, I felt like I'd never really seen the subject of perception really handled in a film before. There's been a lot of films that are about perspective, told from different points of view, but never really one about perception, in that if a group of people experience a certain event, especially an intense event, each one of them is going to have a different recollection of what happened. Um, so the, the challenge was in how do you tell that cinematically. There are three different types of triangles. There are equilateral that have all equal sides and isosceles which have two equal sides and one different and a scaling triangle has three different sides. And since the film scaling is told from three separate points of view, uh, it felt appropriate that, uh, that it be named after a triangle with three different angles. Well, it seemed interesting to me as well that since the film was told from three points of view, you have these three stories, it got me thinking that in photography there are three primary colors. So I ended up assigning a color to each of the three main characters. Uh, Margot's character is red, and Adam's character is blue, and Hannah's character is green. Um, so you need all three colors to, to find all three stories to find the truth. Um, each of those colors are incorporated in each one of the, the clothing that the characters wear and also even certain key props within the film change color depending on whose story you're in. I mean, I think that each one of those colors lends itself to a certain type of emotion and that's going to be interpreted, uh, interpreted slightly differently depending on the person. Um, but also, on some of the same, you see some of the same scenes in the characters' different stories, but even when we would shoot those again, we would change the lighting slightly, in that in all of Margot's story, the lighting tends to be a bit softer, and in all of Hannah's story, uh, the lighting seems to be, to be a bit harder. There are harder shadows, there are harder, there are more solid lines, um, which sort of had to do with, with what the characters were, that, that when you're younger, you have a lot of confidence, you think you have it all figured out, everything is very black and white, that's right and wrong. But as you get a little older, you gain wisdom, you see that there's more of a gray area. And so this was something sort of lighting-wise we decided to incorporate into it as well. My first film was called In Exchange. Uh, I made that film in 2001. I was about 22 years old. Um, it's more of a horror film. It's kind of a combination of The Shining and Carrie. I wrote the film when I was 18 years old, so when I look back at it now, I feel it's very juvenile. Um, and we had a very, very small budget, and we made it for $12,000. Uh, and we were just trying to kind of discover the process of filmmaking. Um, it did get released. It's on Amazon and places like that, so it is for sale. Um, and it did help me my second film made, which is called Quench, which I call sort of a gothic drama. It has to do with an outsider's perspective of the vampire goth subculture. Um, but I think it goes a little deeper than that as well. Um, we shot that all in the autumn uh, in Indiana uh, in 2006, so there's a lot of oranges and browns and reds and blacks, and it's a very autumn color feeling film, which makes it even more gothic. And that film came out in 2008, and it's also available on iTunes and Amazon and other places around the world. Sure, well I think I have the same, almost the same major influence with everything I've done. Uh, Stanley Kubrick has always been a key influence for me. I've always admired the way he tackles very difficult subject matter but tells it in such a beautiful and intelligent way. Um, but also filmmakers like Alfred Hitchcock, Roman Polanski, Lars von Trier, David Lynch, David Cronenberg, uh, Miguel Haneke, uh, Gaspar Noe, Catherine Berlant. Um, I have many influences. Um, I love the horror genre. I grew up on horror films. I think they tend to be very simple stories and, 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 and for entertainment's sake, which is fine. Uh, that doesn't particularly interest me as a filmmaker. It does as a film goer, uh, but, but not as a filmmaker. I'm always looking for something with a bit more substance, uh, something that's going to challenge the audience, not shock the audience, but to challenge the audience in a certain way. Uh, the next one I'm making is definitely a little more grounded in the horror genre than Scaling was, but it's a very dark film. But I still am not sure if you would call it a horror film. Um, but uh, but I, I love horror film. Uh, and I feel that there's a new wave of young filmmakers that are coming up now that I'm sort of labeling a, almost an avant-garde horror genre that's starting to build, where you have very dark stories based on the horror genre, but they're telling them in very new and interesting ways.